This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. So we're going to go through and look at the accounting treatment of financial liabilities, uh, having gone through and covered everything to do with financial assets. Uh, you'd be glad to know that once you've understood financial assets, that the financial liability sort of follows on. Because what you've got is financial liabilities arise when you're looking to raise finance uh, via debt finance, aren't we? So when you have that debt finance, you have yourself a financial liability because you have a contractual obligation to deliver cash. OK, uh, and the standard goes through there and says that there are two types of financial liability uh, held for trading which is essentially what we have when we see a derivative that is unfavourable, which we'll speak about in the last session. So most of the time, I say most, all of the time here, when you're looking at debt instruments that you have used to raise finance, they are there as you're held to maturity. Held to maturity, financial liabilities. Okay. Uh, how do we go through and measure it? Well, you measure it initially at your net proceeds okay so remember that's your proceeds from issue deducting any directly attributable transaction costs and then subsequently as you're held for trading sorry held to maturity will be the amortized cost so, oh hello we've seen amortized cost before haven't we yes yeah, familiar from your financial assets and it is because essentially a financial liability is where you issue the finance isn't it and a financial asset is the person who has provided the finance, such as the investor or the bank. OK, and the treatment is the same in both sets of books for held to maturity, but it's just the mirror image. OK, so the company is raising finance, so issuing the debt. So they debit bank credit financial liability. Whoever is providing the finance credits the bank and debits their financial asset as held to maturity. OK, if I've issued debt, then I'm going to have an interest expense. If I have bought debt, then I'm going to have interest income. If I have issued the debt, I need to repay the coupon rate and the principal. If we have invested, then we want to receive the coupon rate and receive the principal. OK, so it's exactly the opposite way round, which is great because hopefully you've mastered your financial assets and we can go through there now and adopt the same technique. Is it there for your financial liabilities? Uh, so what you've got uh, an example, two of them. Uh, it says explain how these financial liabilities should be initially subsequently accounted for in the financial statement of Evans. So statement of financial position, statement of profit or loss. Uh, we've issued two debt instruments with a face value of $10,000. So that is your par value, isn't it? Face value, par value, hotel, motel. Uh, and if we look at the venture one for now, that's one of those zero coupon bonds, isn't it? It has a coupon rate at 0% and is redeemed at a premium of 3310 in three years time. So when we talk about a premium, that is above par value. So if the par value is 10,000 and it is redeemed at 3,310 above, then it will be redeemed at 13310, won't it? Okay, that's the amount that we paid in three years time. Uh, the market rate of interest is there at 10%. So even though there is no coupon interest on this bond, we need to go with the substance, don't we? And if we are issuing debt at 10 and repaying 13,310, then that difference is essentially interest and the effective interest rate that the substance on the loan is there at 10%. Okay. So what we've got is we're going to go through there and draw up our table. So we've got their year one and our brought forward. Our brought forward is there, is it at 10,000, isn't it? If you want the journal entries, 
we've raised finance so we debit the bank don't we and we credit our financial liability okay uh, we then have is it the interest the interest is at your 10% so in year one is that as a thousand okay again here you debit your finance cost and you increase the liability don't we okay because that's what happens with interest okay it accrues on top of the liability uh, the coupon rate of cash that you pay is 0% so here that's zero so your carry forward figure that you have I think is 11,000 isn't it so the interest expense goes in profit or loss. The carry forward goes on the statement of financial position. Okay. Uh, year two, I start off with my 11,000. 10% uh, was it there at 1,100. No cash, which gives me 12,100, doesn't it? Okay. Uh, year three, I've got my 12,100 opening liability. Uh, the interest is that 1,2,1,0. If you tap that onto your calculator, be careful because what happens now is at the end of year three, that's when we pay the cash back, isn't it? That's when this liability is redeemed. So here what we do is we debit the financial liability because we have paid it and it has been extinguished and we credit the bank uh, that should bring you down to nil okay magic so initially you recognize it at net proceeds well there were no transaction costs to worry about you then treat it subsequently at amortized cost so you increase the value of the liability don't we using the effective rate of interest. We deduct any contractual cash flows that you have to pay to then give you the figure that you have on the statement of financial position. Okay, there you go. I just find that. So okay, and literally the debits and the credits are just exactly the opposite from what you have with regards to a financial asset, okay? Uh, if you want, stop the video and have a go at the second scenario. So the venture number to, and then when you've done so you can then go through and start the video up again and see how you get on so we'll give you a moment to go through and pause it did you pause it and we'll then start again okay it's up to you whether you do or whether you don't I genuinely don't mind so if we go through there and put in a new page to go through there and look at the second adventure uh, what you have there is a coupon rate now is it of 2% so we are contractually obliged to pay 2% of 10,000 every single year uh, be careful here it was issued at a discount of a thousand so when we're talking about a discount that is a discount below par value so if par value is 10 and the discount was there as one, then we are issuing it, aren't we, for proceeds of nine, okay? Uh, when it's redeemed, it's redeemed at a premium of 470. So that's your 10,000 plus 470, which gives me 10,470, isn't it? Okay, and here, that's in this period of two years time okay again the effective rate is the same is it there at 10 percent uh, initially it's at your net proceeds so here at your discounted value so if i look there at year one and you're brought forward is that there as nine thousand isn't it interest is at 10 percent so is that my 900 and then the cash that we pay 
is 2% of the coupon. So 2% of your 10,000. Now, with my limited mathematical ability, I think that is 200, isn't it? Okay. So we take the opening figure, we add on the interest, which is expense to profit or loss. We deduct the contractual cash flows that we need to pay, which are 200. Does that give me 9,700 as my figure on the statement of financial position? Uh, year two, we start off, is it with the 9,700? 10% of that is at 970 as your finance cost for the year. And the cash, be careful, I think it is 10, 6, 7, 0. What? Where does that come from? Uh, 10, 6, 7, 0 comes from the coupon of 200 plus the fact that it was redeemed at a premium of 470 above its par value. So 200 plus 10, 470 gives me 10, 6, 70, doesn't it? So I could go through there, take the opening, add on the interest that is expense, reduce it by the contractual cash flow. So that's not just, is it? coupon but it's also the principal amount of the loan plus the premium and then that gives me the is it a nil value once it's been extinguished at the end okay excellent again if you wanted to it's a quite cute bit of accounting if you total up the interest it's 1870 okay uh, so what you've got there is the amount of proceeds that you went through there and received was it there as the 9,000 you pay back the interest is it there of 1,870 uh, and if you add those up you get is it 10,870 uh, which if you total up is it the cash it comes isn't it to 10,870 70 okay uh, so if you take the interest uh, of what you paid of 1870 what you pay back as well uh, of the initial par value is 10 uh, so that, that gives you the overall amount of interest doesn't it okay uh, excellent uh, i think on that note we'll go through there and give yourselves a bit of a break uh, recap the world of financial liabilities make sure you're happy with the table and I'll see you all a little bit later on.